shadows start to move as the golden dust begins to fall over the agricultural fields that have been burnt by the sun in the American South. No, not cattle or deer, but something much more damaging than any of those. There are wild boars, unskilled, have no faith in this. The intelligence of these monsters is ferocious, and they are quick and crafty. It is not only difficult to capture them, but it is also a large-scale operation. Now, how do Americans manage to pull it off? Let's take a visit to the uncharted territory of wild boar trapping, shall we? The presence of wild boars is not even permitted in this area. They were brought there for the first time by European explorers in the 1500s. However, over the course of several centuries, a significant number of pigs managed to escape into the wild, flourished, adapted, and eventually evolved into a breed that is today known as feral hogs. Not only that, but they spread like wildfire. The population has skyrocketed to more than 8.30 million throughout 39 states in the United States by the year 2023. An invasion that began with a small group of pigs traveling on wooden ships eventually became one of the most catastrophic invasions in the history of North America. There is an excellent reason why they were included in the list of the top 100 most terrible invasive species on the planet. These creatures are not simply messing around for the sake of amusement. When they are not assaulting humans, they are destroying farms, tearing up sports fields, spreading diseases to domestic pigs, and occasionally even attacking humans. Each year, they are responsible for an estimated $2.50 billion worth of damage. The majority of states in the United States currently let anyone to capture and kill wild boars without any restrictions. The term protection extends beyond the realm of pest control. But what are the steps involved in actually capturing one of the most intelligent animals on the continent? Scouting is the first step. In addition to low-lying places, riverbeds, creek lines, marshes, and forest margins, wild boars prefer low-lying locations. Those who are hunting for them search for three different signs. Narrow paths that were created through dense undergrowth, prints of large muddy hooves found close to water, digging marks that are deep and continuous. Some indications of foraging. Having access is essential. In the end, you will be required to transport dozens of irate pigs in addition to bait and traps. Choose a spot that is adjacent to a road or an ATV route that is shaded and has access to water. At this point, it becomes quite ingenious. Trappers will apply bait to the herd in order to condition them before placing a trap. The wild pig is an omnivore, however, they particularly enjoy eating fermented maize, molasses, and scraps from vegetables. Almost everything has a powerful and sweet aroma. In the selected region, bait is dispersed on a daily basis for a period of one to two weeks. There is, however, a catch. Humans are required to keep their distance. Are there too many people present? The wild boars depart. Not a bait? In any case, they depart. What's the answer? Trail cameras are used. It is possible to perform remote monitoring and timely bait refills without being discovered by using hidden cameras that transmit real-time footage directly to a smartphone camera. After some time has passed, the boars start coming back like clockwork. And at that point, the hunt gets underway in earnest. When the boars have reached a state of comfort, it is time to attack. Exactly in the same spot where the bait was, traps are set up. How come? Due to the fact that the herd already feels secure in that location. When capturing entire herds, trappers will utilize either corral or silo traps, depending on the size of the group. Singles or pairs can be caught using box or cage traps. It is required that trap walls be higher than five feet. Those pigs are able to leap. Initially, the door to the trap remains exposed. Pigs come in, consume their food, and then go. The structure becomes second nature to them. When they have been feeding for three nights in succession, cameras give confirmation of this, a crucial indication that even the timid individuals feel secure. After that, the trigger is activated. In order to entice them to remain for a longer period of time until the door is opened, the bait trail leads deep within. The moment that gate is shut, chaos explodes into the air. Dozens of wild pigs crash into steel barriers, but the trap is able to hold, 
because it is constructed robustly and is buried deep. High-tech traps are now commonplace in modern times. Remote triggers that can be activated by a smartphone or laptop are also included in some of them. Within a single drop, a single smart trap that costs $75,000 can capture as many as 50 wild boars. Howdy, it's too late. Where do we go from here? The vast majority of trappers use precision shots to put an end to boars on the spot, immediately above the eyes, face the direction of the spine. Alternately, you can aim toward the eye on the other side of the head. Moreover, gloves are an absolute must. Over 30 different infections and over 35 different parasites, including leptospirosis and brucellosis, are carried by wild boars. There are some hunters who butcher the meat on the spot, but the majority of pigs are distributed to processors such as Broken Arrow Ranch in Texas. This facility is USDA certified and processes between 1,500 and 1,700 wild boars annually, with the majority of them weighing between 80 and 180 pounds. Boars that are older? In most cases, skipped. Due to the presence of hormones, its meat has an overpowering odor. Be quiet. There is more than one trap that can finish the battle. Over the course of the past few years, authorities have collected more than 15,000 pigs from areas such as the Great Smoky Mountains. However, the population continues to increase. How come? Due to the fact that wild boars reproduce similarly to rabbits, only two litters every year. There are between four and twelve piglets in each litter. In addition to being able to sprint up to 25 miles per hour, males can weigh up to 400 pounds, making them quicker than many motorcycles. They are able to flee even when they are damaged. They are able to adjust. They acquire knowledge. There are 2 million wild boars in Texas alone, making it the hub of the crisis in the United States. One night in June 2022, six hogs tore through a farm in Texas, destroying 2,000 pounds of crops in just a few hours. The farm was responsible for the destruction. The devastation caused by wild boars stretches far beyond just damaged crops. These powerful, invasive animals don't merely trample fields, they destroy entire agricultural ecosystems. Their relentless rooting behavior turns carefully cultivated farmland into wastelands of upturned soil, shattered irrigation systems, and ruined harvests. What might take months to grow can be demolished in a single night. But the damage doesn't stop with plants. Wild boars have an immense ecological footprint that endangers native wildlife. Their omnivorous diet includes everything from roots and small mammals to bird eggs, amphibians, and even endangered species. They are known to devour the eggs and hatchlings of ground-nesting birds, and documented cases show them feeding on gopher tortoises, a keystone species already struggling to survive. With their high intelligence, aggressive nature, and lack of natural predators in many regions, wild boars quickly become apex invaders pushing native animals to the brink of extinction through competition, predation, and habitat destruction. And alarmingly, these animals are not afraid of humans. Since as early as 1,825, wild boars have attacked people over a hundred times, often resulting in serious injuries. Encounters usually occur when boars feel cornered or threatened, but their unpredictability makes every approach risky. Their tusks are sharp, their charge is fast, and their strength is unmatched for their size. This isn't just a rural nuisance anymore. It's a rising national threat, one that's spreading fast. Yet the United States is not alone in this battle. Across the globe, another unlikely invader has reshaped the landscape in devastating ways, the rabbit. In Australia, rabbits hold the title of the most destructive introduced species. The story began in the mid-1800s, when a British settler released just 24 wild rabbits into the countryside for hunting sport. What followed was the fastest mammalian invasion in recorded history. Within decades, those few rabbits multiplied into hundreds of millions, spreading across vast territories and leaving behind a path of agricultural ruin. Unlike native species, rabbits faced no natural predators in Australia. They bred all year round, digging countless burrows and grazing every blade of grass in sight. 
crops failed, topsoil eroded, and native herbivores were outcompeted. This wasn't just an inconvenience, it was an ecological disaster. Australia's response was drastic. Authorities destroyed warrens with explosives, flooded burrows with poisonous gases, and introduced biological agents such as the myxoma virus and later the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus, RHDV. These measures caused population crashes, but never eradicated the problem. The rabbits adapted, just like the boars. New generations developed resistance to the viruses. Others changed their burrowing patterns to evade control efforts. What began as a small introduction became a permanent part of Australia's environmental history. Whether it's the wild pigs brought to the Americas by explorers in the 1500s or the rabbits set loose in the fields of Victoria, these stories are more than historical anecdotes. They are powerful lessons. They show how a single decision, perhaps as simple as releasing a few animals, can spiral into an ecological crisis with consequences lasting centuries. These are not just tales of animals, they are cautionary narratives for policymakers, landowners, and environmental stewards. Nature, when disrupted, doesn't forget easily. Once a species takes root where it doesn't belong, restoring balance becomes an uphill battle, often fought with limited tools and endless consequences. So, if you found this story eye-opening, remember that awareness is the first step toward prevention. A single introduction may seem harmless until it isn't. Like and share this with others so we don't repeat the same mistakes of the past. Because sometimes, the most dangerous invasions don't come with roars or howls they arrive silently, multiply quietly, and transform everything in their path. Spread the word. In addition, make sure you subscribe to our channel, because in the following episode, we will be traveling to Brazil where an even more peculiar conflict with exotic species is just getting started. We'll see you there.